Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Conversations on Conflict. Uh, I, I'm your host, Ben Kreitzberg, working with the Conflict Resolution Center of Montgomery County. And today we're doing another episode um, as we've been reaching out to the candidates for Montgomery County Executive. Uh, and today I have the pleasure of being joined by uh, Peter James, one of the candidates for, for Montgomery County Executive. Uh, so, Peter, thank you for joining me today. If you want to introduce yourself really quick to the folks who tuned in. Yeah, my name is Peter James. I uh, uh, moved to Montgomery County when I was four, uh, around 20 years old, went out to uh, California, Silicon Valley to learn my trade and spent 20 years out there. Uh, came back in 93 and uh, been raising. I've got two girls and a wife that works at Shady Grove uh, Hospital. And uh, I, I run a uh, high tech R&D company called Crystal Clear Automation. And uh, I have so many good solutions I keep bringing to the county and they basically just uh, ignore them. So I decided to run to try to implement some of these technologies that um, would, would help, you know, the county. Yeah, absolutely, Peter. And, and actually, you brought it up. I, what I want to hop right into is, you know, your, your background and your career working in the tech industry, like you said, going out to Silicon Valley, working with some of these big name companies that have been um, really, you know, at the forefront a lot of a lot of these new technologies. Um, how do you feel like the, that experience and that knowledge that you've gained in that in that uh, industry has prepared you for for this position? Well, essentially, the uh, county government is about a couple dozen different enterprises. So my background, you know, at, uh, we had over 200 uh, clients, anywhere from Fortune 500s. Uh, we did work for uh, Santa Clara County, San Mateo County, the city of Sunnyvale, um, and uh, uh, national gov gov uh, governments. Um, uh, so I... I, I I was a guy, I never never uh, finished college. I kind of uh, just headed out to uh, California. And uh, the, uh, the, the first thing I was just knocking on doors to get a programmer's job and then ended up being the uh, president of uh, uh, Renaissance Consulting. And at the time we were doing the Intel's cost evaluation system. So I've developed the, the ability to look at very complex organizations and understand all the process flows and everything. So I think I can go in there and take that $3.3 billion worth of spending and knock off at least 10%, if not 20%, just by automating it. Um, so, you know, nowadays, if you want to order something, you go on Amazon and you click it, and, you, and sometimes you can get it the same day. And there's no reason why government shouldn't run like that. So, um, that's uh, that's pretty much you know the the kind of capabilities I want to bring to the county. Gotcha, gotcha. So you know, t being able to look at um, you know a company like IBM and and you know like you said, sort of figure out the the flows and the processes. That's something you feel like would be pretty straightforward in terms of transitioning into into a government and seeing that those yeah. the same flows and, and systems. Yeah. And, and I and I want to turn the government back over to the people. Uh, I don't know if uh, you're. Uh, viewers have seen the Sim City game, but it's an urban uh, uh, planning video game, and I want to do one of those for the county. If they go to my website, pjames.us, they can click on a link on Pike and Rose and actually see a 3D rendering of the P Pike and Rose area. So this would be something I do for the whole county. So if there's any development uh, that's proposed, um, fixes to Rose, cha changing in the zoning, you can basically see it simulated before it happens, and then the the whole community can can vote on you know what they like, what they don't like. Uh, so the, it's the idea of uh, making truly open government um, for for uh, you know greater participation on on what goes on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think it's it's fascinating the way you know that you're proposing to integrate integrate technology into. Um, into legislation and voting and how the community interacts with their government. I think that's great. Uh, well, one thing I, I noticed on your website that I found really fascinating was your, um, your focus on the, um, the PRTs or the, or the personal yeah. rapid. Uh, do you, do you want to speak to that a little bit? Yeah. Well, basically um, I, I, I did some quick uh, calculations and uh, uh, the, the million or so folks in the County 
are wasting about 100 million hours a year uh, sitting in traffic. And we're the second worst congested area in the whole nation. And these personal rapid transits, uh, the first one went in in 1975 in Morgantown, West Virginia. They had uh, uh, three college campuses in town that were two miles apart and it was taking two hours for the students to drive between uh, campuses. They put in a personal rapid transit there and it fixed, it immediately fixed all the traffic problems. So I, 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 we, we can, we could uh, fix 270, 495. Um, and these are um, autonomous uh, car, electric cars that run on dedicated guideways. The uh, PRT in Morgantown hasn't had a single crash in 47 years. So, you know, the, the county, county council or whatever talks out both sides of their mouth, they say, well, we want to achieve vision zero, which means no serious injuries or accidents for um, the next, uh, uh, by 2030, we're going to eliminate all of those crashes. And there's just no way, um, except if you use one of these personal rapid transits. So the problem, you know, we have a battle over roads and, and transit in the county, and none of them really work. You know, there's not a solution. So the personal rapid transit what I'm going to do is make sure we order uh, we, 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 when we order the actual vehicles that they would be uh, uh, crash tested and be able to run on surface streets so that in the up county, um, you, you go to the end of the run uh, wherever it's congested, say on 355. And if you live two miles from the, the, the last stop, you get behind the wheel and drive it all the way home. And then so I'm proposing a hybrid between cars. So you get the best of cars and, and transit. Um, and so that, that's one of my main uh, goals. And then I wanna give away, uh, one reason I'm running, I went to uh, county executive and I said, can I get a purchase order for 100,000 free electric vehicles? And he said, no. And I said, but it won't cost the county anything. And um, so I, I, I'm running, actually, I'd like to maybe make half a million of them. And uh, using right now, if you're uh, rich and have a $7,500 tax liability, you get to use the $7,500 tax credit. But the rest of us um, can't take advantage of that tax credit. But there's a little bit of a loophole in the law that says is if a manufacturer sells to a nonprofit, the manufacturer can retain that $7,500 tax credit. So I'm going to work out a deal. I'll put out an uh, RFP to manufacturers that would take that $7,500 and, and return it to the county as a rebate. And that would mean we can get these vehicles for free. Wow. Well, I mean, that's, that's quite, quite a claim there. I love that. Is that, um, so I, I did, I was, that was something I was going to ask you about was the, the whole, you know, being able to give out free electric vehicles um, to people in the county, but now that you've explained it a little bit, um, I guess I'll ask you a question that just pops to mind. Why hasn't anybody thought of this before? Why isn't this something that, that is being done already? Well, probably the, the, in the U S the, the, the cheapest road tested, uh, electric vehicles about comes in a little under 20,000. So there's a little bit of a uh, margin, but, uh, GM has a joint venture, venture called SAIC, um, in China. And they have a four seater that they're, they're retailing at $5,000. So I figure if the Chinese can do it for five grand, we ought to be able to do one for 7,500. So I'm working with a, a guy named Dr. Pilla. He's um, a uh, automotive uh, engineering professor at Clemson. And he also has a composite lab. So we're looking at uh, to, to get the drive the price down is to use um, basalt fiber, which is about 25% lighter than fiberglass, and it's maybe a fifth the cost of carbon fiber um, to build these things, and then build them with a skeleton as opposed to a full. Uh, so the skeleton would be similar to humans or any any animal. The, 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 the you know that's how nature made you know made um, animals is to give them a skeleton, and so cars aren't really cars are built with a full. Um, uh, chassis or whatever. So we would just, uh, basically this lightens up the car enough. And if you lighten the car up, then your battery's smaller and cheaper. 
So, um, you know, I, I basically I'll, I'll provide a free license to the manufacturers. Um, plus we have a bunch of other technology like robotic mowers where we have some technology can actually pick out and, and um, uh, uh, locate weeds. Uh, we, we can't use pesticides in the county anymore although they still use them on highways and um, the parks is use, uh, using pesticides, but we can eliminate that uh, with some pes uh, uh, weeding robots. And so I just want to, you know, get us into the, you know, the 21st century. We mm -hmm. have this 311 system, which you're lucky, you know, if you hear back in a couple of days where you, you should be able to get, you know, direct access to, to what you're looking for, whether it's a, a, you know, see where your permit applications, um, at or, or say you report a pothole, you can get online and immediately see where it is in, in, the, in the workflow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it definitely, it, you know, just for, from listening to you and from the, the research I've done, uh, it seems like you're, you're really committed into, you know, trying to modernize things or right, right, bring these sort of big, big idea technologies into uh, the county so that residents, you know, can, um, make use of them right with between yeah, uh, sure. fixing the environment their communities making um, communication with um, their their government and information more accessible and improving transportation reducing um, traffic and things like that um, you know it, how, what kind of challenges do you see or you know other than um, uh, you know coming into this 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 election well, and the incumbent and Everything. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I entered the, the, the race late uh, a little bit before the, 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 the deadline, so I couldn't really, it wasn't practical to qualify for public financing, so uh, two of the candidates have uh, a six to one match uh, on taxpayers, so being able to, to outreach, but right now I'm out there, I'm giving out about a 500 uh, uh, flyers a day, so I should be able to reach maybe 35, 40,000 people, but it's a matter of word of mouth. I, I, I can only rely on word of mouth. I just don't have the funding that these other guys have to do mailers. And uh, I do have a, about an 84,000 uh, uh, mailing list, but it really is get, you know, getting my name out there and getting people to, uh, the, the problem is a lot of people decide, you know, uh, night before or on election day who they're going to vote for. So uh, if they, you know, receive, you know, 20 mailers from, you know, a candidate, they're, they're you know, the name recognition. So mm -hmm. probably, you know, that's the biggest, um, you know, getting the message out and, and interviews like this help out a lot. Um, sure. Going back to the conflict resolution, I think there's a major one in, in that um, I'm, I'm the only candidate that's supporting the um, uh, Macedonia uh, Baptist Church, the uh, uh, Moses Cemetery uh, conflict, which is, you um, basically uh, a bunch of uh, uh, African-American uh, graves got dug up and they don't want to kind of uh, 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 preserve the remains or memorialize them. Uh, they just want to build a, a, a you know, high rise on top of the uh, uh, grave. So that, that's the, the, the one major conflict right now in, in the race. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, if, if elected, right, and you have, have all these, these ideas that you'd like to, to bring to the county and see, see implemented, um, how, how long would something like, like the, the PRT system, for example, take, take to implement, right? Getting the, the vehicles and then sort of establishing that around the county so that people can use these autonomous, hybrid autonomous vehicles um, to get around and avoid traffic. Well, we can start uh, building them within two years. Uh, there's a company called Glideways is probably ready to go. And there's another company out of um, Guadalajara, Mexico that have systems that have been uh, deployed. And there's another company that makes a little bit bigger vehicles uh, called Get To There that have been deploying them. So we'll, we'll reach out to everybody, but realistically we're talking, you know, three to four, four years. One, one thing that while I will do immediately though is um, the Crescent Trail between Bethesda and Silver Spring is at grade and the county's on the hook to build a, a bike path along. And, and, and so that's about a three and a half, four mile run uh, that we can actually build the bike path since we have to do it. I think 90 million has been 
um, budgeted for it already. And then on the bike path, just put some of these ponds out there and let people ride on them between Bethesda and Silver Spring. And I think once people try them out, get hooked, then there's no way they're going to build a yeah. light rail because you know it's going to be much faster and and easier. And um, but but these things they um, since they in uh, most of the places will put them particularly in Down County they'll be elevated on pylons every 150 feet. So they can really be built off site and, and maybe come in overnight and put them up. So the, the, the construction, they don't have to rip up all the roads like they're planning to do on 355. So that will, will go uh, pretty well, but there's gonna be the you know, process of vetting the technology, make sure it's you know, all safe and whatever. Like I said, the, the earlier technology is more like train control technology in West Virginia, it has basically not had a crash with an injury for 47 years. And so, it, 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 so, so um, yeah, I, I think this will go much, much faster than all that road construction. And these articulating double long buses, they were taken off the streets of London when they found that they, they injured, um, they were involved in four times as many crashes as a regular standard bus. So, you know, again, we're talking, the council says we're going to have uh, vision zero, no serious injuries or death by 2030, yet they're designing our transportation system to kill more people. And actually, there's been studies done on light rail as well. And light rail is eight times more likely per passenger mile to uh, 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 harm a pedestrian in a crash. Um, if you ride in them, your passengers are safer than automobiles, but if you happen to be a pedestrian, so that's a matter of also equity as well, where, where um, so, so um, yeah, there, there, you know, there's a, a, a lot of things to be said, but, you know, uh, Mark El Elrich has been working on this bus rapid transit for since the 90s, I guess. So that's his baby. And uh, the, the, it doesn't seem like I'm talking to rational people, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but once they've latched on to it, 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 even Josh Tolkien from the Sierra Club told me, he said, Peter, it's taken us so long to get the par purple line up and running. There's no way that we can change course. Because, you know, you've got to herd all the cats to to get the political will to do something. And uh, the thing about county executive, um, the county executive has a sole authority over road projects in the county. So I wouldn't have to get any permission. And uh, bus uh, per, uh, personal rapid transit is the only tra transit system that actually pays for itself. All the other ones have to be subsidized by the government and the taxpayers. So uh, it's gonna be easy. We don't, we, we don't really need to go out for federal funding. And mm -hmm. it'd be nice to get state funding, but that's not a requirement either. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that the way you talk about these ideas is kind of being like a no brainer, right? Like things that um, just kind of seem to make sense. And as you say, you know, um, you feel like you're, you're you know, talking to, to people who um, are being unreasonable and, and aren't willing to listen. Yeah. Um, you know, is, is that how do you feel that you're prepared to go into those conversations and come out, you know, maybe trying to, to have changed the minds of those people you're talking to, um, you know, from a conflict resolution standpoint, that's what I'm, I think I'm curious about, yeah. how, you know, how you're going to be able to, to really um, change the hearts and minds. Well, maybe, uh, you know, based on the vote tally, they may decide yeah. uh, during the thirties, uh, the, the, the communists and the socialists kept running and they never won, but it moved the democratic party further to the left and we and adopted a lot of the socialist uh, policies we had there. So uh, that, that would be the worst case if, you know, if I didn't win. Um, but, you know, I, 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 th these guys, they keep saying for climate change or transportation that they're going to go out and get experts. And I, I, I just don't think they even know how to qualify an expert. I got to tell you from my conversations with, uh, uh, I, there's a quarter Ford study that's going on um, to see if, how transit might help the 270 me mess. And I said, well, will you include personal rapid transit in the study? 
and both the planning uh, uh, people and MCDOT said, uh, we can't. I asked them why. They said, well, we don't know what it is, and we'd have to hire a consultant, which we can't afford. So um, um, I, I like to say that th these guys don't know that elephants can't jump. And uh, essentially, uh, Mark Ehrlich keeps talking about these big, you know, 100,000 pound buses. Um, and, and if you look at the just the, the I don't think they understand chemistry and physics and how it's applied to problems like climate change or, you know, the transportation issues. And I, and I think um, um, I, I like to, it, 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 one issue is like uh, the county tells everybody and hands out uh, uh, free mulch and compost bins, but composting the way it's done now is very bad for the environment. And if you think about it, you get a big pile of uh, carbon and nitrogen and you come back six months later and there's 10% of it left. Well, where do you think all the carbon and nitrogen went? It went up in the atmosphere. So to me is, you know, so we have all these things we're professing that uh, are gonna be good for the environment and really it, it's the opposite. They're, they're bad for the environment. Gotcha. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough, Peter. And and let me can, can I ask um, where should anyone who's watching this go to learn more about you and your campaign and, and your ideas for the county? Yeah, well, it's uh, pjames.us, and there's lots of videos on personal rapid transit, um, some information about some of the environmental things I want to do. Uh, one thing's missing is that is there's a big focus on um, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, but that won't solve climate change. We need to take the carbon. And, and put it back into the earth mm -hmm. Be because until we do that, we need to sequester it. So one of the things I wanna do is reforce the ag reserve with agroforestry and, uh, and hydroponic greenhouses. Um, and that will actually let the farmers produce 10 times as much revenue on the same land. And at the same time, sequestering all that carbon back into the ground. And where the other candidates say, we're gonna do these great things for climate and, uh, and then we're going to be um, uh, a good role model for the rest of the world. I wanna build green industries here in the county and go out and sell them to the rest of the world because it's not gonna do us any good if we reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and we're, you know, we're underwater <laughs> from climate change. So we have to actually not only set an example but go out and, and, and push these technologies to all these other jurisdictions around the world. Interesting perspective. Yeah, I like that. Um, well, well, thank you, Peter, so much for, for joining us today and for you know, um, you know, participating in, in our conversations on Conflict Show. Um, I have one more question for you before I let you go today. Uh, and that's something that I ask all the guests that come on here. And that question mm -hmm. is gonna be, uh, what does peace in the community look like to you? What is peace? Yep. What is peace in the community? Um, like well, I think um, a community that, you know, is not fearful of the police and uh, where uh, uh, basically there isn't a, a two tier system, say like transportation equity is one of them, you know, everybody else is driving around in cars and we tell the lower, you know, people of lower income, to get on the bus and which takes four times longer. But it's really, I, I think it's, it's um, the main thing is uh, getting, you, you know, younger black males or, or immigrants or um, undocumented early, there's, there's a lack of trust. And if we can get, you know, and then the police on, on the police side, you know, there's a few guy bad apples that spoil the whole bunch, I guess. But, you know, this is like our family, neighbor or family dog that you know you can go and kick them and, and kick them and it'll still be there to, and, and loyal so um you know I, I i think if we can you know integrate the community to the extent that they you know that people feel comfortable and feel that the police are there you know mm -hmm. to protect them um and 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 that and how we get there it, it's going to take a lot of work Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Well, thank you, Peter. I really appreciate you and want to thank you again for your time. Um, and also to everyone who tuned in for this episode, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, 
Uh, if you want to learn more about Peter and his campaign, you can click the link in the description to, to go to his website and get that information. Um, and as always, if you want to know more about the Conflict Resolution Center, you can visit us online at crcmc.org or give us a call. You can reach out to us at 301-652-0717. Thank you again and take care. Thanks again, Peter. Thanks very much for having me. I appreciate it. Take care. All right, bye, everyone.